All right, intro to anatomy and physiology. Here is a super fast review before you take your test. Hopefully these little last tidbits will help you. Um, as promised yesterday, we're gonna be filling out this concept map um, on page seven of your packet <clears throat> um, to go through each of these different pieces um, just so everything's super fresh in your mind. Hopefully it won't take too long. I'm gonna get rid of my screen here so you can see the full board. All right, so starting off here, kind of with number one, our main functions of our nervous system. It is meant to sense the world around us. So there's the sensory, the integrative parts. It decides and makes decisions about what you're gonna do based on what you've sensed. And then there's the motor reaction, um, what you can control, so your muscles and glands. Uh, one thing I think this concept map is missing is a little bit of talk about the neuron. So I want you to add a little arrow and box to going to a neuron here, going off the top. Um, so the neuron, a few things that you'll see on your test is that the neuron has these, the nodes of Ranvier, that is the little gaps in between our Schwann cells. We have the axon terminals, that's the end of the um, axon that meets up with the dendrites. And speaking of dendrites, whenever there's a signal sent, it comes in on the dendrite and out towards the cell body. That's the direction that the impulse gets set. All right, um, make sure you know that structure in a lot of these images for your test. All right, moving on here on um, number four and five. So the organization of our nervous system, it's broken into the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is divided into your brain and spinal cord. That's all that's central about your central nervous system. Your peripheral nervous system is broken down a little bit more. So you have nerves that are the sensory or afferent nerves. You have those nerves that are the motor or efferent nerves. And then the way that you control your motor parts of your peripheral nervous system gets broken down even further. So we have the voluntary actions. Those are gonna be like my skeletal muscles um, that I can voluntarily control. It's called the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is those things that are involuntary, things you don't have to consciously think about. So your heart rate, your breathing, dilating of your eyes, digestion, things like that. And depending on how you are doing, are you stressed or are you relaxed? Um, you might be in your sympathetic, the fight or flight um, nervous system, or if you are hopefully relaxed and calm, you're in your parasympathetic uh, nervous system, the rest and digest portion. All right, <clears throat> so moving on here up at the top, these are the supporting cells of our central nervous system. So the neuron is one of the main cells and then the neuroglia are the other supporting cells, the neuroglia. So astrocytes were one of them. They are what form your blood brain barrier. The microglia are the phagocytic cells that would fight off bacteria or other things invading your central nervous system. The epididymal cells, they are responsible for circulating your cerebral spinal fluid. They don't make it. Um, it's made by the choroid plexus in your diencephalon, but the epididymal cells help move it because they have cilia, little wave-like extensions. And then my favorite one, the oligodendrocytes. These are the ones that produce the myelin in our brain and spinal cord. Now, our peripheral nervous system has others as well, which we'll get to on the next screen. Before we get to that though, um, our nerve impulse, another name for that is called an action potential. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to mention this. Um, the myelin um, is what increases your action potential, which is what goes in box 18. And when something is myelinated, we observe that as being white matter. So the parts of the spinal cord that have white matter in it have myelinated axons. Um, if it is gray matter, it is unmyelinated. And the benefit of having myelin is that it speeds up those nerve impulses or APs, the action potential. All right, moving on to the other 
side of things. So those four up above were the um, supporting cells of my central nervous system. These two are my peripheral nervous system supporting cells, the Schwann cells and satellite cells. The Schwann cells make myelin in my nerves, so in the peripheral nervous system. And do the same thing. They look like white matter and they increase that action potential. Alrighty, <clears throat> so moving over to our reflexes, there are two different types, the polysynaptic and the monosynaptic. We do not talk about a monosynaptic arc, so you can cross that off. But this is just talking about what a reflex is when nerves are coming in and out of the spinal cord. What's really important for your test is that you know the order of that reflex. So it starts off with receptors receiving some stimulus. You stepped on a Lego, let's say. Then the sensory afferent neurons are what are going to allow the signal to be sent to your spinal cord very, very quickly. Once at the spinal cord, there's the integration function of your um, spinal cord. Those association neurons are going to take care of that for you. Um, the motor efferent pathway is what sends the signal out because you just stepped on a leg and you want to pull your leg up as fast as possible. And so it's going to control those skeletal muscles. And that skeletal muscle is the final thing, which is called the effectors, the effectors, those muscles and glands. All right, almost done here, guys, moving through quickly. The regions of the brain, there's quite a bit on the test um, about the different regions and lobes of the brain. Lots of things you practiced on your homework assignments, but um, there's four main regions. So the cerebrum is broken up into two hemispheres and they have different lobes, your frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. And in those regions, there's different parts that control different aspects of your, what you can control, uh, what you, where you think, where you understand language and where you can speak. Make sure to you know those regions and those pictures. Um, the part of the brain that makes up my thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus is the diencephalon. That's the deep part of the brain. The brain stem is where my medulla pons and medulla oblongata are. Of these three, please remember, medulla oblongata is the autonomic things, those automatic controls. So breath, breathing, heart rate, um, things like that. And then lastly, our cerebellum. This is the one that is involved in balance and coordination of your body movements. That is it. Just a super fast review before you guys rock and roll. Good luck on your test. Um, as you guys um, get into your test, you're going to go to your school email. Um, the instructions are posted in plan book as well as Google Classroom. If you have forgotten how to access your email, it's your regular ID and password. Right? Just whatever you normally use to log in to Google Classroom or any of your other school things. It's just your ID number and your password. I've sent you a personal email with your link. It is timed at 60 minutes. Read your instructions carefully. Good luck. Have fun if you can. And I'll see you soon. All right.